You're such an asshole. Continuing at assholeconsulting.com. Hey, Captain. I'm a 30-year-old filthy Euro. I work as a software engineer contractor contractor making for a fairly comfortable living despite living in a poor country with no debts never had any and never will awesome my background is bleak though i've been raised by a single mom dad abandoned us when i was 10 was picked on during elementary and high school university was fine mostly because i wasn't the partying type and just couldn't find common topic with people around my age also i was very weak failing at the sports teams basically the classic nerd story I knew about the Red Pill Master, etc. long before it got traction, but I was too lazy to do something with myself apart from studying and gaining work experience. That changed like one year ago when I started lifting and working out, and now I'm kind of buff. Wow, well, what's 179? 190 centimeters. Ah, oh, you fucking... You guys. Uh, you Europeans with your metrics. Let me get the... Uh, why is my computer so slow today? Accessories, because for whatever reason calculator isn't there all right what is this 90 <coughs> 92 divided by 2.54 is that centimeters per inch no 92 that's 36 inches no i didn't do that right you're 92 centimeters 190 centimeters i'm like you're a short little dude all right let's do the 190 divided by 2.54 74 divided by 12 Oh yeah, oh you're you're six three. You're a tall dude. All right, and then what are you weight wise? Ninety two kilograms. Two point two times ninety two. Two hundred pounds, dude. You're you're jacked. Fuck, I wonder. <laughs> uh, uh, I also had some mild success with women even before working out, but for now I prefer being single. I have good intelligent friends, even female friends, and so far it seems all as well. The problem is, despite all this confidence. Oh, despite all of this, my confidence is extremely low for some reason. As an example, I had a conflict with my upstairs neighbor who works a low IQ job, nothing against that, and lives from paycheck to paycheck because he was being too noisy. He is roughly the same size of me and somewhat aggressive. He never tried to punch me or anything, but after a few instances of me pretty much doing nothing, he now has no problem. Stepping in, right in my face and shouting up stuff and being threatening. Police really can't do anything, and I don't want to be forced to sell my own apartment and move out because of some asshole no pun intended. <clears throat> when I want to go out and hear him in the hallway, I tend to wait for him to leave and my legs just won't stop shaking from fear. All right, well, you got to get over that. Um, I get a camera. See, I mean, the, the immediate default thing to do is to go and work out, train in jiu-jitsu, train in some kind of fighting and just, you know, fight him. But uh, as you're aware and you're going to get to later, you, you can't do that legally nowadays. Um, well, you, you could get the self-defense. So you're you're probably gonna have to wear a body cam, and get them on harassment. If he, I mean, and just you, you shouldn't be cowering. So there's two problems. One, the legal issue of how do you deal with this guy. But then two, you gotta you gotta have your legs quit being shaken. You got you gotta get in a fight. Hopefully in something like a like jujitsu or a boxing ring where it's controlled and guarded, <clears throat> so that you know you can handle this guy and beat him up, so that you're not worried that you're gonna die and your legs won't shake. Um, but that's that's not going to be a solution. That's just going to create more problems. So what I would think is you should just go out there and um, have a body cam on, and then if this guy starts threatening you, then you go to the cops. Um, yeah, he tried. He never tried to punch me or anything. But after a few incidents, incidents of me doing nothing, now he has no problem stepping right in my face and showing up seems to, yeah because he's a bully and you didn't stand up to him so now this is established now he knows he could push you around so now you gotta you gotta really get in his face or, or draw the line and say you're not gonna fuck me. you're not gonna scare me please can't do no no da. okay I also tremble when I have to pass by some random dude at night on a sidewalk for absolutely no reason to cut it short I do not suffer from social anxiety or any other millennial bullshit to disease and mentally, I think I'm absolutely fine. It's just my brain is wired the way it always imagines the worst possible scenario, and I can't control the fear and induces even if there's mostly no reason for that. Despite having a STEM background, I am more of an emotional type of person, caring for more for relatives and friends than for myself. How do I fight this? Is there really something wrong with me, maybe due to the fucked up childhood and effectively having no dad? Yeah, that's probably part of it. Uh, it kind of goes the opposite way, though. Usually, like, if you don't have your dad around, you usually are getting in fights. And fights that 
<clears throat> you probably start a higher chance that you're the bully. Um, but if your mom, like my folks, I remember um, I used to be a normal kid and I would get in fights and I'd beat up my brother, and, you know, normal kid stuff. But then they just start cracking down on me. Like if you get in one fight at school again, you're you're going you're grounded for a month. And then I couldn't fight, and it was probably one of the worst things because then you are in there. Like right when middle school comes up, it's like good. I can't. You know, oh no, no, you can't. And, and for a short little guy like me, that sucked because it's it's kind of having your hands tied. Um, should I visit a psychologist? Don't think that would be a good idea. Maybe start doing martial arts, even if they take long years to of work to get at least an average level. I've read up on the topic, but nothing really helped. Uh, I don't think I'm not able to punch someone in the face, but I live in an EU country where self-defense might become a huge legal problem, and I don't want to ruin my life by going to jail just because I freaked out and hurt someone. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's the problem. See, what I'm worried about is you go get jiu up, and all of a sudden you, you snap, and you break this guy's face, and you really beat the shit out of him. And now he got a lawsuit. This guy doesn't have a real job. Oh, you're the rich kid. He's had all the money handed to him by his parents, and then they come after you. Um... That, that's the one problem. I even wrote about it in Black Man's Got Out of Poverty and Bachelor Pad Economics. It's like, look, no matter what somebody says to your face, this is not 1935 anymore where there was honor. You could punch a guy in the face and then go have a beer. You know, once. <clears throat> they will sue you. They will go after you. And you do not want a criminal record. And then you have, you have a lot worse problems, employment, criminal record, all that other shit. It, it, no matter how right you were. So that's really what the modern day man, you know, before you turn 18, that's what the modern day man has to really control himself. Even if you're bigger and stronger and you're ever, you can beat the snot out of it. It's just, you can't do it. You just can't do it. Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to ruin my life by going to jail because I freaked out and hurt someone. I always carry pepper spray, but I'm scared, still scared, way more than a perfectly healthy, strong, and fit guy my age should be. I'm asking for a video response, and please go hard on me. I'm used to that. If you're willing to help me, please respond with your prize press. Best regards. Okay. Again, the two problems you have. One is psychological, where you're irrationally afraid of a guy walking down the street who probably isn't even aware you're there and has absolutely no animosity against you. And then you got the problem of having this bully where you live and you own your, your place. And I asked you if you wanted to move, you know, like... You're committed to staying there because moving to another apartment would mean risking another neighbor lottery. Engineers do not like unexpected outcome. Well, you already got it. Why don't you just go move? Okay, I disagree with you. You might as well go move to, to a nicer place or a place where it's not loud. I simply don't like moving out because of some asshole. However, it's mentally draining. Well, then you're going to have to deal with them. Uh, selling the apartment and buying the house would solve the problem, but at the cost of me needing a mortgage, which I absolutely dread. Well, can't I? Can you sell your your apartment and then get another one for an equal value? I don't agree with you not not, not selling this place. Please keep that option open because it's just it, it might just be worth it. Please also keep in mind we are talking Europe here. Guns are not permitted. I understand. We can't even carry a nice self defense is all. Right. All right. <clears throat> Psychologically, I think it's not going to hurt that you go talk to a therapist. Not at all. Um, I'm a, I'm no big fan of therapists. I think most of them are bullshit. I would go talk to a male therapist, and I would go talk to a guy who hopefully has military experience. That's what I would do. Talk to someone who's a real man, not some limp dick fuck that go, I like the children. I mean, the pastors and therapists who, who are in the military and have been to war make the best pastors and therapists because they're not bullshit. They, they honestly believe they're shit. Um, so that's what I would go. So try and find a male therapist who had some kind of real life background, not some idiot like, well, you see, Freud says. Uh, and then also along the same line of dealing with that is I would get into sport, martial arts of some kind. <clears throat> um, maybe not karate or judo or what's kendo with the stabs, but something Krav Maga, jiu-jitsu, where you're actually rolling on the floor, boxing, I would say, where there's actual, you need the physical contact and to roll around on the ground. Now keep in mind, you're not. You're in no danger. I mean, you might get injured. Um, that there's always that risk, but that comes with any sport. But man, all all the jujitsu places I've been, all friendly, all straight up dudes, and very peaceful. They're not gonna. They just want to have the ability to fight and defend themselves. Krav Maga. Never been to to a dojo or whatever they call it, but I imagine it'd be the same thing. So I would look into one of those two. So <clears throat> that's true. Self defense. I. 
this someone else can tell me I hated frankly <laughs> doing jujitsu because well we had a puke bucket and the guy would turn the heat up to like 98 degrees it was, it was miserable well get you going it's like look I just, I just want to learn to fight I don't I don't need to like have this be boot camp um so I'm thinking maybe kickboxing as well some where you just flat knock them out uh, of course what is it 90 percent of all fights end up rolling on the ground so that's where the jujitsu comes in but what you want to do is something that you would actually use. You're actually going to spar, not you, you, you're wearing like foiling or fencing and then, and then you touch the guys on the face, very light-handed, and, or you hit them in the, oh, you're, here's your black belt. No, it's, you're not going for a black belt. You're going for like, you're rolling on the ground. You're going to get fucking bruised up the first day of jujitsu, and then you get stronger than you are now and you learn to fight. Um, then, in theory, that would give you at least the ability, well, not in theory, it would give you the ability <clears throat> and increase the chances of you surviving a fight, um, but then it would also give you, get you more comfortable with being threatened or being around guys. It's like, no, I could probably take, or you're used, to, and you're used to getting, I almost want to say kickboxing or boxing, so you get hit. So you get roughed up a little bit. So you get used to that and accustomed to that. And I, you know, I got in fights in school and I had a brother. So that's normally how I be. You had a single mom and just, oh my God, you would do it. Um, so that, somewhere you get beat up a little bit, you know, you're not going to get your arms broken, but you're getting punched. You're taking hits. You're going to get bruised up. And you're fine. You're fine. You're like, oh, damn, that was, a, that was tough. So that would work psychologically on lowering your fear of getting hurt or harmed. Um... The other thing with with this guy, you you want to have a cam have a webcam on because this is unacceptable. There's got to be some law in the country you're in where if this guy's yelling at you and threatening you, you should be able to film it. Um, but once you get jujitsued up, once you get it, then I would just who gives a shit if he's out in the hallway? Who gives a crap if he starts something? You know, too bad. You know, just say fuck off and just keep on going. And if he says touch me, I'll fucking sue you. And just, that's because that's legal, that's legal. But you don't you don't start the fight. But you gotta get used to to dealing with this guy because you don't want to deal with him and, and get him to a point where he's pigeonholed and ain't yelling at you or getting in your face. So that's <clears throat> that's another thing. He's got a girlfriend or a mom. Maybe you bang his mom. <laughs> Find out if he's got a sister and fuck his sister. That'd be good. That'd be great. Maybe there's something about him. You can Google him, find out if he's got a weakness. I don't know. You'd have to do something. And yeah, that, that could go in towards illegal things. But see if there's something you can find out about him and use against him. Just, like, keep him in control. Um, so that would deal with the psychological stuff. Talking to a therapist, training up, learning a martial art, taking a couple hits. And then, you know, I know you don't like it, but maybe go to a, a nightclub where there's other people around. Go where there's a bunch of dude bros. Go, I'm not saying go to a bad part of town, but just walk out in public so you're not afraid of the average guy walking down the street, you know? Just, and, and most guys, again, most guys aren't going to be there to beat you up. So that's, that's why I'd say you got to go talk to a therapist, because that's irrational. That's just irrational. So there's that. Now, actually, dealing with the guy, <clears throat> like I said before, webcam or body cam, make sure you're filming him. Um, make sure it's legal to film him in your country because in the United States, different states, either you need their permission to film him or you can film him without their permission. It depends on the state. So I don't know what country you're in, so you're going to have to look that up. And then I would also go to the cops. First thing I would do is go to the cops. And I know you see the cops are worthless. Dude, did you go to the cops and talk to them? Just talk to say, look, here's the problem I got. Um, what what should I do? You know what 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 do you recommend I do? And they'll tell you, and then you can you know talk to the cops. They they will know. <clears throat> and if one cop says no, you don't get well. Then go, go talk to another cop. Go talk to a different detective. Go talk to another lieutenant. Cops, you got to shop around. Some of them are dicks. Some of them are cool. Um, but they will know the law, and they'll know like, oh yeah, this is totally illegal. If you get this proof, blah blah blah, blah we'll be able to bust his ass. Um. The other thing with this guy, if he's loud and noisy, what I did, because I didn't live in the greatest parts of town either, although I was surprisingly quiet, but if I had loud neighbors, what I would do, here, I got them right here. This is, these are worth their weight in gold, earplugs. I got them at Walmart, you can get a ton of them. I use them for motorcycle riding predominantly, but <clears throat> when I was younger, I would get earplugs, and then I just would be able to go to sleep. Only problem is your alarm may not wake you up. 
Uh, and if you're also having trouble sleeping, I recommend taking sleeping pills. Not a lot. Take like half or one, you know, whatever the recommended dose is. But yeah, you need your rest. You need your rest. And so I would just do that is have your earplugs in there. Um, but if all this, like if you can't get this guy to leave you alone and he's just going to make your life hell and you're all worried and afraid and even after the jujitsu and the therapy, you're still afraid and you still can't go out into the hallway, dude, you're going to have to sell your place. That's just how simple it is and find another place like it. Take your proceeds from the sale of your current apartment <coughs> and then go find another one. And here's the other thing. if Rats bring rats. Mold begets mold. You have an asshole like this. He's loud and annoying. You're not the only neighbor he's annoying. And then all these other people are going to sell their property. And they're going to sell it on the cheap or they're just going to get rid of it. You know, try to sell it a little bit below market. And then other poor, loud, obnoxious, unreliable bad neighbor type people are going to buy into your condo. Then you got a Section 8 or a government housing condo or an apartment building or just a, a low rent, uh, noisy crime rent. Forget it. Get out while the going's good. Go find some other quiet place where, where you work. Just, there's got to be an apartment out there where it's quiet and you don't have to deal with, with bullies. I can't believe this guy's 40. <laughs> I mean, really 40 years old? And they're still doing that. I guess if he's if he's a spoiled brat, but yeah, I, I wouldn't. You know, I'm sure over the course of time, the the value of your property has gone up. You could sell it. So what? You, maybe you got to borrow a little bit of money. All right, maybe you got to borrow ten thousand dollars, whatever the equivalent is. Um, it's worth your sanity and mental health. So if you can't solve this problem, um, and I know it's cowardly. Uh, but it's not because the only other option is to beat the shit out of him and do it like three times in a row. Although after the first time, he will call a cop because he is a coward. And we will lower bullies, cowards, because they always pick on people they know they can. They always pick on smaller people. Um, and then you got much bigger problems. So I, you know, just just get bad people out of your life, even if it requires you to move. Even if that requires you to move, um, no matter how much you like your apartment. So. Oh anyway, yeah, dude. <clears throat> I wish I had a, a better idea, but talk to a therapist, go get training in jujitsu, take a couple punches, talk to the cops, figure out what you gotta do, film them, get some proof, um, and then get some earplugs and some sleeping pills and, and then consider selling your place and getting a nicer one or a new one. So, Alright, hope that helped out. You guys got questions. Go talk to America's older brother, who will consult people in foreign lands as long as you speak English and you pay me. Go to assholeconsulting.com, get my books. They're on Amazon.com. Tune into the Clary Podcast, SoundCloud.com. And um, I think the month, is it October already? It's coming up. I think the month of October will be Share the Asshole Month or Tell People of the Asshole or something like that. I want to do a little bit of expansion and marketing. Although I'm tired as hell, still getting back. All right, we'll see you guys later. Toodles.